Welcome to Central Youth Online. My name is Trevor. I'm one of the team members here at Central Youth. We are so glad that you joined us here this weekend from wherever you may be watching from. We want you guys to know that this is a place where you belong, you matter, and we do life together. During this experience, we'll have an awesome time to worship and hear an incredible message of hope from one of our team members. Let's get ready for Central Youth Online. When troubled seas may rise, when darkness veils the skies, I will keep a grip on hope as I sail through the unknown. When clouds fill the atmosphere, waves swell with doubt and fear, but in the middle of the storm, you show me I am not alone. My hope is found in Jesus, the anchor of my soul standing on firm foundation a lighthouse shining home yet in my darkest hour your light will guide me home a beacon for my rescue jesus the hope for all sing this out you calm the raging seas you bring the storms to cease but even in the aftermath i know this trouble too shall pass clouds fill clouds fill the atmosphere waves swell with doubt and fear but in the middle of the storm you show me i am not alone my hope is found in Jesus, the anchor of my soul. Standing on firm foundation, a lighthouse shining hope. Yet in my darkest hour, your light will guide me home. A beacon for my rescue, Jesus the hope for all. Your hope is rising darkness is trembling we will declare that you are the light of the world our hands are lifting our voice is shouting we will declare that you are the light of the world your hope is rising darkness is trembling we will declare that you are the light of the world. Our hands are lifting, our voices shouting. We will declare that you are the light of the world. Oh, my hope is found in Jesus the anchor of my soul standing on firm foundation a lighthouse shining hope yet in my darkest hour your light will guide me home a beacon for my rescue jesus the hope for King in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. Let's sing that again. And you are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you, and you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are way maker, 
Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We sing, because you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. He's here, you are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, he's a way maker, cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, oh and that is who you are, that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are, we sing, and that is who you are, that is who you are. That is who you are, that is who you are, even when I don't see, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop Oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We sing that you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, and that is who you are, and that is who you are. And that is who you are, and that is who you are, it is, that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are. Let's see how we're doing. Come on, people. Come on. It's Sunday. Somebody lift up a shout for our God. Come on, people. It's game day. It's the best day of the week. Ah! It's good to see you guys. It's good to see you guys. Uh, it's been a good week, but um, no. Hey, toward the end of that video, we talked about Central Live. If you don't know who Central Live is, it is our worship band that's originated right here out of Central Church, and they are dropping a brand new EP in just a couple months. So be on the lookout. It's going to be legit. They sang a couple new songs from that this morning. But it's great. It's honestly really good. I'm not blowing smoke. It's some of my favorite music that they've ever put out. So, hey, if you don't know who I am, my name's Trevor. I'm part of the team here at Central Youth. Wow. Okay. High school, man. You guys are something else. You know that? You know that? Middle school kids, I can say anything. And they're like, yeah! And you guys are like, get me out of here right now. I'm done. Well, hey, man, I don't know how you guys' weeks have been, but school starts next week. What's the consensus on that? No. <laughs> Just a big old thumbs down, like, no. Hey, I'm kind of confused by it, though. Like, you guys are online, but you're not? Like, how is this working? Online? Is anyone going, is anyone going in person? No? Gotcha. Okay. Bishop Gorman. They just go and do whatever they want. You know what I mean? Faith, Meadows, Agassiz, they can do whatever they want, honestly. I go to UNLV. We're all online. I got to take yoga. I got to take yoga online. I don't even know how that's going to work, to be honest, bro. 
I, I read the syllabus and they told me I have to write a paper on yoga. I, I'm blown away by where, we, where we're at in these days and ages. But hey, if you haven't been here the past couple weeks, no worries. Uh, we're in week three of our series called The Church. And what we're doing is we're, we're really talking about some basics of our faith, some of the core principles of who we are. And so this week specifically, we're talking about the church. It's one of my most favorite things to talk about, and I'm excited. And so I challenge you guys to, to lean in, to buckle in. We don't do this just for the sake of it. We actually believe that when we gather together, God wants to do something through us. The Bible says when two or more are gathered, he is here. And so I challenge you guys to buckle in, to lean in, to listen to what God actually wants to say through this time. But before we do that, let's go ahead, let's pray. God, thank you so much. Uh, God, thanks for these students. God, thanks for the moments that we gather here together. God, thank you for your goodness um, that we get to come here. We get to have fun. We get to laugh. We get to make memories, God, but ultimately we get to learn more about you. So God, we give you this time. We pray that you would have your way in our hearts this morning. Uh, we love you so much, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the cell phone that's ringing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, do you guys remember your first time going to church? Does anyone remember their first time going? Yeah, it was pretty, was it recent? Oh, no, no, no. First time coming to Central was a while ago. That's right. Hey, did anyone, who, who, went, who grew up going to church? Just curious. Show hand. Wow, look at all you kids. You love Jesus. That's awesome. For me, though, I didn't. I did not grow up going to church. Anybody like me? Anybody? Yeah, heathens. Woo. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, I did not grow up going to church at all. It wasn't because my parents, like, they didn't hate God. We just didn't go. Like, we didn't even go on Christmas or Easter, which I respect out of my parents because at least they were honest. You know what I mean? Like, some people go on Christmas and Easter and post their photos to make it look like they're good Christian people and go to church all the time. We just didn't go ever. So I was like, respect, Mom and Dad. Thanks for being real. But my aunt, on the other hand, was a very devout believer. And so what would happen is, is I would go over to her house and sleep over with the rest of my cousins, and she would take me to church. She was doing the sleepover evangelism method way before we did it in student ministry. It was crazy. But anyway, so she would take me to church, and I remember very few things. I don't remember much, but I remember one, it was boring. Two, I fell asleep. Three, I got in trouble because I fell asleep. And then four, there was free food. Fourth part was the best part. We got free donuts and Kool-Aid out in the courtyard. That's the only reason I came every single time, and I didn't throw a fit. That was the best part. I loved going to church only because of that. Only because of that. But the rest of it was boring. The rest of it, I didn't feel a need to go. So I didn't grow up going to church. It wasn't a thing. My entire high school life was like, why even bother going to this place? It's boring. It's an old building, old people. I didn't see any reason to go. I think a lot of us are in the same category. We're in the same boat. I think a lot of us, maybe some of you have grown up going to church, some of you have not. Some of you started coming to Central just a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, a couple years ago. Some of you got saved at, at Central. Where's Cam Ansel? My guy, there he is. Stories like that happen all the time. But I think if we're being honest, if all of us are being honest in this room right now, I think a lot of us are confused on what the purpose of the church really is of why we gather each and every Sunday, each and every weekend, of why we do the things we do as a community of believers. What is it really all about? I think for some of us, we're confused in the sense that we just think the church is here to fill our needs, that we're responsible for giving you and everything you need to, to, to walk in your walk of faith. I think some of you guys are like kind of just obligated to come here, if you're being honest, right? Like just looking at some of your guys' postures, you're scrolling on Instagram, your parents probably dragged you out of bed this morning. You just want to get out of here right now. You're looking at the clock, hoping this would go by faster. But whatever your journey is, whatever it is, I think a lot of us, we just don't know why do we come to church? Why do we gather each and every weekend? In fact, I think it's like this. I think a lot of us view the church like this. This is a standard microwave. In case you guys are curious, I don't know if you guys still use those. It's 2020. <clears throat> There's some dirty clothes, and hmm, what's the problem? <laughs> Trey, bro, I swear, I swear, you're lucky. I love you. Ignore the plug. <laughs> anyway, problem is a microwave isn't designed to clean dirty laundry. That was supposed to be a joke, but all right, we'll take it. Anyway, it's not supposed to clean dirty laundry. It's not what it was designed for. And I think that's where a lot of us are at with the church. 
We have a misconception, a confusion about what the church is all about. Now, what happens if you expect our microwave to clean your dirty clothes? You're going to be left feeling frustrated, angry, confused. The same rules apply when we're confused about the church. We're going to be left feeling frustrated with the church, angry at the church, and confused on why I have to even keep showing up every single weekend. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the very beginning. We're going to go to the early church in Acts chapter 2 to figure out, okay, what is the function of the church? What is this really all about? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, great. If you don't, we conveniently have the Sky Bible located above my head every single weekend. So you can always take a look at that. But here's what's happening in Acts chapter 2. It takes place right after the Gospels, which means Jesus has just did his time on earth, he fulfilled his ministry, he died on the cross, rose on the third day, spent some time on earth, but then he ascends back into heaven, and this is where we pick up our story. We have a group of people who have witnessed Jesus, who have walked with Jesus, who have lived with Jesus, and now they're just hanging out all the time. They're doing their thing. And so we pick it up here in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1, when we get to the red word, shout it out, and don't be lame. Like, don't be lame. Don't think you're too cool to not shout out a word, all right? Jeez Louise. Okay. Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Here's what it says. It says, on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting. Together. My guys. In one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. Whoa. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Wow. Press pause for a second. What's going on? This is crazy. You're 100% right. It is crazy. There's a lot going on right here. See, the Holy Spirit is actually Jesus' gift to us after he leaves earth. He says, hey, you don't have to be alone. I'm going to give you my helper, my advocate, the Spirit. And so what happens is, is when believers accept Jesus in the heart, we receive the Holy Spirit. He guides us. He's with us everywhere we go. It's beautiful. But in this moment, this is the first time the Holy Spirit is seen in action. And it's a crazy time. Could you imagine not being a believer at that time? Like being someone on the outside? Like, do you see this? Do you see this right now? Am I tripping? Like, am I, am I really seeing this? You're really seeing it. The Bible actually says, if you read Acts chapter 2, the people who weren't believers actually thought that they were drunk. That they were filled with too much wine. And so what Peter does in this time is he actually uses his opportunity as he sees the people are confused to actually preach the gospel to these people. And we'll pick it up here in Acts chapter 2, verse 41. It says, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. And so here we see the church is established. But notice here, the word church isn't used to describe a location or a building, or a place. It's used to describe a people. And that brings us to our first point today. It's not about the place, it's about a people. It's not about a place, it's about a people. That's our big idea. So if there's one thing you walk away with today, it's that. And I believe this fundamental truth can actually be transformational in our lives when we understand why the people are so important. I think for so long, we grow up thinking that the church is about a building, right? Well, I'm going to church on Sunday morning, right? That's probably what you told your family or your friends this morning. We think of it as like, okay, church can only happen when we're inside the walls of central youth. We're inside the walls of central church, right? But perhaps that's maybe not the way that God ever designed it to be in the first place. For some of you guys who have been going here for a while, you're familiar with our environments. And even if you've just been coming here for a couple weeks, you can kind of get a feel for, for everything that's here. But I think so often we get caught up on what church is supposed to be versus what it actually is. You see, Central Youth, it's, Central Youth isn't our, our check-in environments and our stands and all these signs and our mottos and all that. It's aging. You see, Central Youth, it isn't, it isn't Nine Square or basketball or, or anything like that. It's, it's Marcy. You see, Central Youth isn't the, the chairs you sit in or the infrastructure and the walls and all that. Hey, it's Cam and so. See, the church isn't these, these lights and the stage and the production and all that. It's Jaden Linton. It's not about a place. 
It's about a people. And what's beautiful about it is God uses these imperfect, flawed, broken people to build his church. And we as the church, we as a people, are better when we're together. Go ahead, check out this video. I grew up by miles of redwood trees, tall, strong, and beautiful. And I learned a couple of things, that redwoods are the tallest trees in the world. They are some of the strongest, most resilient, storms and fires cannot take them. And they are Latin for the term forever living but their roots don't even run that deep. They're only that strong and they only live that long because their roots intertwine with the other surrounding redwood trees. Alone, a redwood won't grow as tall and can sometimes be blown over by the weather. But in a forest of redwoods, underneath the soil surface, there's millions of roots connected for they are better together. think of these redwoods, I think of us here. I think of how often we try to go through life by ourselves. The times we've been hurt, the times we've been left, the times we've been damaged by somebody else. And so we decide that we are just fine all alone. But God says, that's not what I created you for. Jesus was passionate about people and community and believed the church was the hope of the world. He calls it a family because here we find our identity. He calls it a temple because we're like pieces that come together to build and hold up one another. He calls it a flock of sheep because we are cared for by the same shepherd and he calls it a body because we're all different parts and no purpose or function is like the other. He calls it his bride because because the church is the love of his life and he calls it a vine or a garden because we're only productive when we're connected. He says the lost have hope through it. He says the hurt are healed through it. He says we must love and forgive and fight to protect it because the community of the church is his absolute favorite. God says we are better together so no matter the weather, fight for it. We were made to grow here. We were made to stand tall here. We were made to be a part of this forest here with each other, standing strong against all odds and going through this life together. I love that video. I love that video for a lot of reasons. But I love how it illustrates, man, we need each other as the church. We don't have to have it all together. In fact, we were never designed to. That we rely on God and we rely on each other to thrive, to grow. See, it's not about the place, it's about a people. Earlier on, I shared a story about my experience growing up, going to church. It was boring, got free food, but I left out the best part of when I actually went to church for the first time and really went to church. For those of you who don't know my story, um, like I said, I didn't grow up going to church my entire life, and I was 16 when I finally decided to make a change, and the reason why, um, I have a best friend, his name is Julius Barnes. Julius grew up here going to church. We, uh, we met in Spanish too. Um, we failed that class, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> and we were best friends. We were the best of buddies, and Julius had been with me through it all. But there was one night in particular that we decided to go to, uh, to a party with a few of our friends, and I remember being at the party and things had gotten out of hand and within a very short time frame, uh, we were told the cops were coming. And so we immediately had to get out of there, rush out of there very fast. We were scared. We didn't know what to do. We were young kids. And little did I know that I actually had stepped foot in the car with a drunk driver. And all we were doing was we were supposed to just drive to the nearest park, rendezvous and meet up with the rest of our friends. But as soon as I got out of the car, I was confused. I wasn't really sure what was going on. Julius grabbed me. He was angry. He was the most angry I've probably ever seen him in my entire life. And he looked me in the eye and said, what were you thinking? What are you doing? I, I had no words. I didn't really understand what was going on in that moment. But Julius did. Julius knew the mistake I made. Julius knew that there was actually a much better life out there for me. And never in my entire life have I had someone care for me that much. And so in that moment at the park, I remember sitting down on a nearby just parking thing. 
I sat down and I just looked and I was like, what am I doing with my life? Something has got to change. And so shortly after, Julius invited me to church. He invited me to Central to come check it out. And honestly, at that point, I figured, what, what do I have to lose? Why not? I might as well go. And so sure enough, I walked in for the first weekend. I dressed real fancy because I thought that's what church was supposed to be. And me, Julius, and Jalen, we went, we went into church. And I remember stepping foot in for the first time. And I, and I knew there was something different about this place. I knew the energy, the smiles, the people. They had something that I've been looking for my entire life. And so I loved it the first weekend, and each weekend we would keep coming back. It was me and my best friends. We just keep showing up to church. We didn't know much. We were just kids, but we just kept going. We knew we just, we liked it. A few weeks later, I accepted Jesus in my heart for the very first time and named him the leader and forgiver of my life. A couple weeks after that, I got baptized him. I got baptized to, to proclaim to the rest of the world, hey, I'm, I'm done with the old Trevor. I want Jesus. Shortly after that, we kept going, kept going. I showed up to Fuse for the first time. And honestly, I was, I was kind of nervous. You ever been nervous? Like that big room is kind of like, what in the world is going on right now? But I showed up to Fuse and I got connected and I met some of the best people I've ever met in my entire life. I met Jason Cho, who's our current Central Youth Director. I met Hunter Cheney and Mark Mealy, and these guys were heroes to me. They showed me what it was like to live a life with Jesus. They showed me what it was like that I didn't need the rest of the world to find true joy and satisfaction. They showed me, man, you can live with Jesus and love Jesus and still have the most fun. They gave me my first Bible. They plugged me in my first small group. They taught me what it was really like to be a Jesus follower. See, Hans Allison, Hans, he's in the room somewhere. There he is. Hans Allison, he would, he would take my phone calls late at night when I felt like I had no one else to go to. He would sit down with me at a coffee shop and speak life into me, pour life into me. Jeff Kiwanuka, our former Central Youth Middle School pastor, sat down with me in the Central Coffee Shop and looked me in my eyes and told me what it meant to be a man, to be a leader, to actually truly live in purity. Jordan Schaefer, right here, right where Lily said, me and her had a conversation about ministry and what it meant to actually not only have a career, but a calling in ministry. And it changed my life forever. I met my current fiance, Peyton Johnson, on a 412 student leadership hike in my junior year. And we're going to get married March 11th, 2021. Yeah. My best man, Julius Barnes. The church saved my life. I'm standing here right now, not because of a building, but because of a people. That's the beauty of the church, of what we get to be a part of. The church isn't meant to fulfill your needs. It's not an obligation. The church is meant to save lives, to bring hope to the rest of the world. And we get to be a part of that. We get to be part of one of the most beautiful things God invites us in. in Matthew 16, God says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is what we get to be a part of. We get to be a part of his church, choosing imperfect, flawed, broken people. I'm not saying your story is going to be exactly like mine, and that's the cool part in all reality, that God uniquely wires each and every one of you, and your story is your own, and we talked about that last week, the power of your story, not just my story, what God's doing in your life. But my challenge to you guys is to keep showing up, to keep coming back, not out of obligation, but that we as Central Youth, that we would shift our expectations. Our expectations determine our experience. So what would it look like if we actually expected God to do something every time we gathered together? Not only to bring hope and healing into our lives, but that we would go to the rest of the world and share that. The church saved my life. What can I do for you? Let's pray. God, thanks so much. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for every student that's in this room right now. God, they're not here by accident. They didn't just stumble in here because their parents dragged them. God, they're here with a purpose. They're here on purpose and with a purpose. So God, would you remind, that, remind them of that truth right now? that you love them, that you are so in control of all the unknowns that, that are coming our way in this next season. 
God, we lift it up to you. Would you remind these students that they're not alone, that there are so many leaders in this room who would do anything for them, who love them, who care for them. So God, have your way through your church. Help us to be more in love with you. Help us to be expecting every time that we gather here each and every Sunday morning and to share that hope with the rest of the world, with all the people we come in contact with. God, we love you. We give you our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray these things. And everybody said, amen. amen. Well, thanks for watching. We are so glad that you landed on our page. And it's not by accident. So make sure you turn on the post notifications, like this video, and we'll see you next time on our next video.